president has tasked his team to continue to work with Israel to refine their strategy to inflict an enduring defeat on Hamas. And I want to repeat that. An enduring defeat on Hamas certainly remains the Israeli goal, and we share that goal with them. Smashing into Rafah, in his view, will not advance that objective, will not get to that sustainable, enduring defeat of Hamas. Our view is uh, that Rafah operations, certainly uh, any kind of major uh, Rafah ground operation, would actually strengthen Hamas's hands uh, at the negotiating table, not Israel's. Uh, that's our view. Morning, glory, America. That was Admiral John Kirby retired, I believe, on Air Force One last night as the avalanche of criticism on Joe Biden's betrayal of uh, Israel continued to mount. I'm joined by Ben Dominich, editor at large of The Spectator, Fox News contributor. Ben Dominich has his own podcast, and I haven't heard it yet, Ben. What did you think of Joe Biden's betrayal two days ago and of Admiral Kirby's Oh, no, this is fine. Uh, we, we can't strengthen the hand of Hamas by attacking it. Look, you know, the the truth is that everybody talks about Admiral Kirby as if he is the, the smart one, uh, in, which means that in this moment he should know better than to try to spin this. It's it's absolutely absurd to hold this position. Uh, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. Israel is waging a war of defense. Uh, they are completely justified in waging that war. And the fact that what we saw play out this week with the president uh, giving this Holocaust remembrance speech, uh, and then this CNN interview in which he essentially uh, let let loose on on Israel in a way that uh, the White House afterwards had to admit uh, that they had previously, prior to that Holocaust speech, uh, made the decision to deny these weapons, these uh, these munitions to uh, the Israelis. Uh, that in fact they had already moved in that direction, but held that news back in order for him to get the press plaudits from his speech, uh, it's absolutely disgraceful. It's unacceptable. And I think that, you know, politically, Joe Biden has been from the beginning analyzing everything that he does regarding Israel through a domestic lens, uh, through his own fears of the progressive left, the people with the megaphones and the, the people with the kefias, the, the Greta Thunberg uh, adjacent coalition. Uh, and, and I think that the, the irony of this situation is he's completely misjudged what's going to happen now domestically. In fact, I think what he's done, and I wrote this yesterday at The Spectator, uh, is cement uh, the the idea that he has now offended so many different factions, gone against them in so many different ways, that he's essentially surrounded. The, 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 he has failure on, on the economic front, failure on the border and crime front, failure on now the foreign policy front in a way that I think will animate the different factions against him uh, and ultimately will swing independent voters uh, in the opposite direction. I think that he has, this week, cemented his failure in November. I, I want a bumper sticker. I'm Secretary Gates, and I told you. I warned you. Let me. <laughs> I want to play for you. I, I have an buy, explanation. I would buy a dozen of those, yeah. and I can give them away easily. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I put it in your I'm Secretary. Secretary Gates approved this message. I told you so. Uh, I want to play for you two minutes of cuts, Ben, two cuts, 12 and 11 in that order, so that you can comment on them. I think they're the key to what's going on here. Here is cut number 12. Let me tell you something. I was taught. I went to a Catholic. No, no, no. Stop, voice. guys. I'm, I got that wrong. Cut number 11. This is Joe Biden in Wisconsin. This. Uh, wait, I want to make sure I get the right one. Cut number 12. Uh, cut number 13. Uh, at, cut number 13. Joe Biden in Wisconsin this week. I went to uh, a Catholic high school in Delaware, taught by the Norbertine priest from St. Norbert's College, uh, you know, a, a, little town, a little team called Green Bay. Now, here's the deal. We were the only high school in Delaware that overwhelmingly rooted for Green Bay. Every, not a joke, I'll tell you why. Every single Sunday. Not only did they have great teams at the time, we still do, but not only that, my theology professor at the Catholic school I went to was a guy named Riley, last name, and he had been drafted by the Green Bay Packers, and he decided to become a priest. 
before that, so he didn't go. But every single solitary Monday that Green Bay won, we got the last period of the day off. <laughs> now, we Catholics call that indirect bribery, but it worked. <laughs> All right, Catholics don't call it that, but let's go now to cut number 12. Same story, different details, Joe Biden in 2011. Let me tell you something. I was taught, I went to a Catholic boys' school in Wilmington, Delaware, actually Claymont, Delaware, taught by an order of priests called the Norbertines. The Norbertines have their abbey house in De Pere. I have loved the Packers, not just because back in those days it was Bart Starr, Paul Horning, and the rest, but every Sunday the Packers won the headmaster, Father Justin E. Dinney, would get on the PA system, literally, and say, gentlemen, no last period today. <laughs> Made every one of us Packers fans. So I have a sentimental place. And besides, I'm fearful I'll go to hell if I don't root for the Packers. Father <laughs> Dinney may come back. I can't go All right, again, uh, Ben Dominich, compare Joe Biden 2024 Packers story with Joe Biden 2011 <laughs> Packers story. <laughs> Well, first off, one of them sounds a lot more cogent. But the, yes. The second, but the second thing is, the second thing is, this is just such Abe Simpson territory when it comes to storytelling uh, in these sort of meandering ways because he's so emphatic about it. You know, he's so emphatic that this is a thing that actually happened, just like you know, his family members getting eaten by cannibals and yeah, fam- and, you know, Father got, Riley got, got got drafted by the Packers. No Riley yeah. has ever been drafted by the Packers, and and thirteen <laughs> that years was early. My next question for you. <laughs> yeah. No, it didn't exist. But Brennan is the actual principal. In 2011, he was on his game. He could tell a story. He could. He yeah. might elaborate a bit. But in 2024. He's lost, Ben. He's completely lost. He's absolutely lost. lost. And, and, that's the, and this is the thing. It doesn't get better. You and I know this. We've been around people at this stage of, of you know, their elderly nature. And we, by the way, we've also probably, I mean, in my case at least, been around people who were as old or older than him, uh, who were mentally much more sharp and much absolutely. more absolutely uh, you know and you know my my grandmother who's still alive you know she, uh, she doesn't tell stories like this that's for sure and this is the thing is it, it, I, I am when i look at this situation for any voter who is evaluating what they want the next four years to look like one thing voters really don't like is the idea that a president could just drop dead in office i'm not suggesting that that's something that you know, what would happen, but the fear of it, the concern about it has to be something that's front of mind, especially given the presence of Kamala. And I think the more that we get closer to the election, the more that we're going to hear arguments from Republicans and even from some independents. Can we really trust the idea that we're just going to set up for a Kamala presidency that takes place sometime in the next four years, given everything that we see happening around the world, given everything we see happening at home? And, and that's something that I think, you know, look, he may have chosen her based on all these, you know, the, the DEI approach to uh, to politics. But I think that it's going to ultimately be, you know, in part his undoing because people are going to look at the situation and say, I can't trust this situation. I don't have any confidence in her. Um, and I and I certainly can't have any confidence that he's not going to be inventing some new version of this story or one that's more meaningful in a year's time. It's only going to now, Ben, you, you've been around a long time around politics. The president's reversal on Israel, his turn against Israel, avalanche of criticism. You've got Chaim Sabin, uh, one of their biggest donors, saying, you've got to change your mind on this. You've got everybody left, right, and center except the pro Hamas people saying that. Uh, Christine Rosen said on commentary yesterday, Joe Biden is marked by irritable vanity, uh, and he hates to be wrong, and he hates to be thought dumb. He's done a very dumb thing. Any chance he changes this, given the kind, the scale of the blowback he's gotten? No, I don't think he will. And I, I think that you know the degree to which he's in control of things uh, will be judged here in the, in the coming weeks, because there will be some people who are close to him who have his ear, uh, who are going to express feelings that they should have gone in a different direction or that they should have played this differently, um, and they will try to, I think, find some middle muddling ground. Uh, to make up for it, just given the scale of the backlash. But I think he'll prove resistant to that, as he always is. He always is convinced 
that he's the smartest person in the room, that he knows best. Uh, and, you know, it, it, the, the Gates comment has to grate on him, going back to that. It has oh, to yeah. grate on him on a regular basis. And, and that's something that I think actually does affect his decision-making. Yeah, the irritable vanity and being old and just stubborn and out of it. And I do want that bumper sticker, Secretary Gates. I told you so. I'm Secretary Gates, and I approve this message. I told you so. Ben Dominich, thank you. Follow Ben on X at B. Dominich. Get his podcast. See him on Fox News and read him.